Have you ever wanted to start cacti from seed? Maybe you've got visions of growing a towering saguaro from a tiny little speck. Or maybe you're just attracted to the idea of starting a collection on the cheap. Sowing cactus seed is a fantastic and very affordable approach to getting an enormous collection very, very affordably. Now, there's probably about 750,000 cactus seed tutorials on YouTube. So today I wanted to share with you a very different approach, utilizing the rich biota in the soil, a living soil, to get our cactus seedlings off to a very healthy and happy start. So stick around as we look at the arid zine approach to cactus seed starting. Here we go. Now, how can you be sure that my method works? Well, I've sown thousands and thousands of cacti seeds over the years. Here's just a few examples of plants that I've brought along. This one here is Youngest Osirius inquisiviensis, beautiful serpentine South American species. I absolutely love its kind of notchy appearance. And this one here is one of my favorite Trichocereus mutant hybrids growing with a beautiful crest-like shape. Now, they're just two, like I said, of thousands of plants that I've used this approach for and had great success. It's not to say everyone else's methods are no good, absolutely not, but this is what works for me, so I thought I'd share it with you today. Now, what are we gonna need to attack this seed sowing method? Well, it goes without saying, you're gonna need pots these are seven centimeter pots but you know whatever works for you you just don't want them to be too deep uh, naturally scoop for soil i've got a soil mix which i'll share with you in a second but you're going to need a soil mix you're also penciled to label what you've got i'm using what's called the baggy method so you're going to need ziploc baggies they're going to create a beautiful humid environment for these seeds to germinate in. Now, where this approach differs is as opposed to many who like to really nuke their soil, sterilize everything, make sure that there is almost no life whatsoever in that pot before they sow seeds, I'm taking the opposite approach. I'm creating a living soil. So what I've got here, this is a bag of fungal and bacterial spores, which I'm gonna inoculate my soil with. I'm also gonna be doing a little bit of an experiment today. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about it, but I'm using homegrown fertilizer mix, which you might have seen in my earlier fertilizer video. The one other thing that you are gonna need, real chunky, in this case I'm using chunks of sandstone, but any real chunky mineral that you can put at the bottom of your pots. And I'll talk about why we wanna do that in a little bit more detail later on. So you get all that stuff together, and you're ready to start sowing seeds. So let's get into it, shall we? Now, of course, the question that's at the forefront of everyone's mind is, what sort of soil mix should I be using? Now, cactus seeds, they don't know what mix they're being sown into. So when it comes just to the germination aspect, it doesn't really matter. You can germinate them on a wet paper towel if you want to. However, creating a good soil mix is about the health and aftercare for the seedlings, promoting vigorous growth and healthy young plants. So with that in mind, today I'm gonna to be using a mix that's half organic, half inorganic. The organic component is just a store-bought seedling mix. Nice, light, fluffy, free from any big chunks of bark or sticks or any of that sort of crap. It's not a very useful thing when we're raising seedlings. The inorganic component is a nice, coarse, chunky mineral mix. Size is about two to five millimeters. The actual components aren't that important, but today I'm using a mix of scoria, pumice, vermiculite, and zeolite. But whatever you've got at hand, just don't use like smooth, polished stones. It's not ideal. Nothing for the roots to grip onto. And that's a really important structural component of raising young seedlings. Of course, the important thing that sets us apart today is this ingredient, our mycorrhizal inoculant, the fungus and bacteria that we're gonna be putting into the soil. Why do we do that? Well, that fungus and that bacteria serves two purposes. 
the first thing it's going to do is it's going to break down any of the organic components of the soil and release nutrients which in theory anyway should promote healthy growth for our plants the other thing that it does is that it kind of overruns and pushes back any harmful pathogens in the soil if there's anything in there that might otherwise kill our seedlings hopefully this fungal inoculant will prevent that from happening so with all that in mind let's put it all together and let's sow some seeds here's the method let's go starting to rain not ideal for sowing seeds but anyway we continue at this stage you've mixed your inorganic your organic and your fungal components together And what you've got is a beautiful, coarse, well-draining mix. And what we're going to be doing now is pretty straightforward. We start by taking a bit of our chunky stuff, putting it at the bottom of the pot. Now, a lot of people will tell you that this promotes drainage. But scientifically, that's not what rocks at the bottom of the pot actually do. They actually lift what's called the water table and... Although I've got no actual scientific evidence to back this up, I suspect the reason that seedlings grow better when you've got rocks at the bottom is because, well, they like moisture. And what you're doing is you're actually lifting up the amount of moisture where the moisture sits in the pot. So these very small seedlings, as their roots go down, they don't have to delve too deep. They don't have to find the moisture which sits at the bottom because the most moist part of the soil is about here now. And because they like moisture and they've got better access to it, they can thrive. So anyway, we've got a load of rocks at the bottom. We take our soil mix, all loaded with good fungus and chunky minerals. And we just load it into our pot, just like so. Now, if you're a real stickler, give it a tamp down, not too hard. And off you go. And what we're going to do now, we're going to put this in a tray loaded with water bottom water it for a little while until it's completely soaked and then we're ready to sow some seeds now from here the process is pretty straightforward you get your pot which is now nicely soaked through get your seeds I find using a folded bit of paper to distribute your seeds is one of the easiest ways to do it and you spread them out over the surface of the soil now what we are not going to be doing today is covering up those seeds. Cactus seeds need light to germinate. So no top dressing, just leave them on the surface. Make sure you label what you've got. Just saying Hagioserius tenuis. So I'll write it on the pot. You can use a label. Don't use a paddle pop stick. That stuff will just get mouldy as. It'll be disgusting. And put your now sewn pot into your Ziploc plastic bag. Now the joyful thing about this process is that we can do it at any time of the year. If you've got lights and a heat mat, do it in the depths of winter and those seeds will pop up. Because it's warming up, it's springtime here in Australia, I'll be putting this in the greenhouse here. How much light are they going to need? Well, a lot of people would think that cacti coming from the desert, they're gonna to wanna to take full sun straight away, but nothing could be further from the truth. In habitat, little cacti seedlings typically will grow and thrive under what are called nurse plants. These are larger plants, whether that be the parent plant that actually sows or shed the seeds, I suppose they don't sow them in nature. The parent plant or under a bush, in a rocky crevice, whatever, they're gonna grow most happily in a shaded place. So what I'm gonna be doing now, putting this pot of seeds into a nice shady spot in this greenhouse. When it comes to temperatures, they're gonna thrive when they get daytime temperatures, probably up around 20, 25, in some instances up into the 30 degree space. To ensure you get the best germination though, a nice swing between day and night temperatures is the best way to recreate their habitat conditions. So that's why if you've got them on a heat mat, it's really good to set it to a timer so it switches off when the lights go off at the night time. Just creates that kind of temperature variation that'll get them going. Now, 
because we haven't microwaved our soil, we haven't soaked it in hydrogen peroxide, we haven't done anything to sterilize it, you're gonna see a bit of life in your pot. I'll share with you, if I can find it, this one here. Now, it's a healthy layer of mold, bitter, algae, all sorts of random stuff. A lot of my pots even have ferns sprout in them. I have no idea why, but realistically, that's not going to be a problem. The only reason you might want to keep that sort of stuff at bay is if you're sowing seeds of very small species, very slow growing things. Species like your Aztecums or your Blossfeldia, which might get overrun by the extra life within the pot. But if you're sowing anything that can outgrow it, and it doesn't have to be anything particularly big, most cacti species, they'll be fine. Well, all that extra life in the pot is actually quite beneficial. Using this method, I've found great success. Now, the next question is, when do they come out of the baggies and what do we do next? Let's talk about that now. Now, if you've made it this far, I must be doing something right. So if you're not already subscribed, hit that button. There's also a link up there somewhere. Click on that and there's a few ways you can support me, including buying this pretty cool t-shirt. Now, when it comes to releasing your plants out of their plastic prison and exposing them to the outside world, there's no real one size fits all approach to this. It's gonna depend on the species. Faster growing plants like your Trichocereus, realistically, I wouldn't leave them in the plastic bag for any more than about three months. But slower ones, particularly your super slow plants, like your Aztecums, I've heard of people leaving them in the bags for one year, two years, maybe even more, because they just crawl along at a snail's pace. So keep an eye on the growth of your plants, see how they're going, you'll know what's going on. When it does come time, however, to open the bag, there's a method that we need to follow to ensure that we don't essentially kill our plants straight away. Any change in environment needs to be handled very, very sensitively. Always good advice, don't change too much at any particular time. So what we're gonna do, let's imagine this pot has got a whole bunch of three month old seedlings in it. We decide, hey, you know what? It's time to let them out into the open air. We're just gonna crack that seal just a tiny bit. Not too much, just a tiny bit. Let a little bit of fresh air in there. Let a bit of the stale air inside the bag out. Each day, what we'll do is we'll crack that bag a little bit more until after about maybe a week or so, the bag's fully open and exposed to the outside air. You don't wanna move the bag, you wanna keep it in the same place that it's been this whole time. Once heard a very good piece of advice. When it comes to plants, change one thing at a time. So if we're changing the amount of humidity that they're exposed to, they don't wanna sit somewhere different to where they've been, they don't want more or less light. Just one thing at a time, we open the bag. Once the bag is fully open, then we can take the pot out. Again, keeping it in the same place. And that becomes the time then to start introducing them to that sort of wet, dry cycle that we would use with our more mature plants. And from there, I mean, these are fairly hardy things. They'll rapidly get used to it and you won't have any problems. You might run into, however, one issue, and this is an issue that can happen in the bag too. If plants get stressed, seedlings in particular, they'll turn red. What does that mean? Well, essentially plants, the cacti will turn red usually for one of two reasons. Either they're getting too much light or they're not getting enough moisture. You can address those, of course, if your soil is dry, pretty simple. Give them a bit of water. If they're getting too much light, you're gonna to wanna to move them into a more shaded position or turn down your lights, give them a little bit less. Now, it's not a death sentence. Plants that are extremely stressed, eventually, if you address the problem, will start to grow again. All it really means is that you've delayed their growth because what they're doing, that stress response, is a reduction in that photosynthetic area. They've gotten rid of a bit of their chlorophyll. That'll slow down their growth, but it's not gonna kill them. And over time, their growth will start to emerge again and you'll be fine. All it means is that you've delayed them by a few months probably. And really, we're not in this game for speed. If you want plants quickly, you're not growing them from seed anyway. So, 
Now your plants are out, they're in the air, very gradual, delicate process. Again, moving them perhaps not into full sun. You don't want to put your seedlings in full sun. Give them at least a year until you start thinking about exposing them to any sort of direct sunlight, I would say. But how do we know when it's time for them to go into their own individual pots? You can see here, these are some little trichocereus hybrids. Nowhere near, in my opinion, ready to go into their own space. Essentially, they can start overcrowding each other. You can have these things in a huge mound. And then, you know, only then is it worth really separating them and putting them into their own pots. With that in mind, I say no reason why not to get in and start throwing about some seeds. It's a really enjoyable and like I said, very affordable way to start building up a collection. And over time, you start to refine and practice and get better at it.